Shekinah glory. You reign it forever. Ah, I'm not going to let you go. Sharataya. Shekinah glory. Lord, you reign it forever. Jesus, Son of the Living God, the Holy Ghost. Redeemer, 
Your glory and majesty and lift it up over. Ha! Ha! Hey! At the mention of your name, demons dread. Hey! You heal the sick, you made the lame to walk. Everybody say! Maybe only the keyboard. If you want to kneel to appreciate him, Oganedo in data language is saying, Lord, we thank you. His faithfulness in our lives, for his faithfulness in our lives. Do again a mingua, mingua, solo bro me here, me here, again a me here. Where go be one? Don't get a mean one. Don't get a mean one. Mean one. Mean one. We're saying thank you. We appreciate you, Lord. Jesus. We bless your name, Lord. Don't get a mean one. Let
goodness of the Lord. I just want you to call God's sweet and beautiful names. El Shaddai Adonai. For in Jesus' mighty name we worship. For in Jesus' mighty name we worship. Jam those hands together for Jesus. I know you can do better. Jam your hands for the King of Kings, the Waymaker. Give Jesus a shout. For the great things he has done. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the great things. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the great things you have done. Somebody give thanks to the Lord. For the marvelous things he has done. Give, give thanks to the Lord, oh, for the great things we say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the marvelous things he has done, I will give thanks to the Lord for the great things. Thank you. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. For the marvelous things he has done, I will give thanks to Jesus for the great things we say thank you. We say thank you, Kabiye Siya Show. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Ashan of Day.
Samuel 2 from Resis. The Bible says, He killeth, He killeth and maketh a life. He bringeth to the grave and bringeth up. We are going to pray. Say, My Father, my Father. Say, My Father, my Maker. As I begin to pray, I shall begin to in, pray. The in the name of Jesus, you are God that kill it. You are the God that kill it. Every satanic agent, every satanic that, agent is that is assigned to hinder my greatness, to hinder my greatness. Die, by fire. Die, die by fire, die by fire, die by fire. Die by fire, open your mouth and begin to pray. Like a shot of a lot 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 of a
Every satanic agent against Omega Fire Ministries, every satanic agent against the Senate Apostle John Suleiman, every satanic agent against Reverend Dr. John Suleiman. Father, you are the God that killed and may kill them. Let them drop. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we sit down, shall we celebrate grace? Celebrate the grace of God. Celebrate the grace that has kept us to today, the 19th day of December. It's time for Rema for Living. Shall we sit down? Bring out. Our copies of Rema for Living, the dynamic model, Reverend Dr. Lizzie Johnson Suleiman is preaching to us on our identity. The message is not an ordinary person, not an ordinary person. And he's saying, you have to tell yourself, I am not an ordinary person. The text is Psalms 82, verse 6. I have said, You are God, and all of you are children of the Most High. Everyone is not the same. There's a great deal of, di deal of difference between a Christian and an unbeliever. Your redemption has translated you to a particular being. You are not an ordinary person. You are a God, the child of the Almighty God. Tell yourself, I'm not an ordinary person. You are born of the Spirit, not of flesh and blood. Therefore, you are immune to sicknesses and diseases. Say, I'm not an ordinary person. You are a temple, a mobile temple. You carry divinity inside you. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Say, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? First John chapter 4, verse 4. See, you are of God. Overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are not predictable. You cannot be limited by the kingdom of darkness, natural forces, or human operations. Say, I'm not an ordinary person. Your operations are higher than them. But they cannot deny your sound. In John chapter 3 verse 8, Scripture tells us, the wind blow it where it leads. And thou hearest the sound of the not tell where and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. In Christ Jesus, you are seated in the heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Far above all principality, all power, and might, and union, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is to come. You are far above every dominion. Do not therefore allow the threats of the enemy get to you. Say, I'm not an ordinary person. You have the power to decide what happens around you. Nothing outside God should affect you. Because in the constituency where you are operating from, only the will of God stands. So you shall decree a thing, it shall be established. That's speaking of a God. I pray for you. Je prie pour vous. A dynamic mother is praying for us. Say, I pray for you. Je prie pour May vous. the reality of who you really are dawn on you by fire. Se par le feu. No more shall your life be tossed about Votre vie by what you are made to dominate. Pour ce, ce que vous devez Say amen. Dites amen. Say, I'm not an ordinary person. Je ne suis pas une personne ordinaire. I am a God. Je suis un Dieu. That's what the, the memory verse tells us. Psalm 82 verse 6. You know, you have to say it with style, with confidence. Some people, they cannot say because they are afraid. You're going to pray as a spirit being, as one born after the image of Christ. We're going to rise up to pray.
that the reality of who I am we don't know me my true identity manifests shout my father my father my father my maker as I begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, God of Apostle Johnson Suleiman, may the reality of who I really am dawn on me by fire. Sharibra come here, they are saying. Carado, Tagabo, Tabos, Shekha, in Jesus name we pray Amen. Our prayers are answered in Jesus' name. Please, before we sit down, let's celebrate grace this morning. <laughs> celebrate grace this morning. And uh, please, I want us to do, I want you to do me a favor by standing up as we honor God this morning. Today, we are taking our welfare, welfare offering. So package your welfare offering now as we stand on our feet and lift it towards heaven. Ask God to give you a portion that pertains to you, your inheritance. Please, can we stand on our feet, please? Package your welfare offering, please. Can we lift it towards heaven? I want you to speak to this offering this morning. Now ask God to give you your portion of your inheritance that pertains to you. This morning, let the angel of the Lord give you your portion that pertains to you in your hands. And Father, we honor you this morning with this welfare offering. And we claim our portion of our inheritance that pertains to us. We activate the angel of this commission to bring it to us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Usher, please, can you help us to collect this welfare offering? You may be seated in his presence. You are in your father's house. Listen to the following announcement, please. Uh, women, choir, you are having rehearsal today by 4.30 p.m. Uh, at the main auditorium. Women choir, please take note of that. Today, 4.30, you are having choir rehearsal. Vacancy exists at Hosanna Conglomerate for the following positions. Accountants, cashiers, laundry attendants, sales rep at the E3, and also we have vacancy for the post of a manager and three months at uh, Hosanna Publishers. So please, interested persons should write the application and submit it at Celebration TV. OFM Medical Center is opened and uh, we want you to please help us to advertise this and patronize us. Services we render include atinanta, delivery, all surgeries, admissions, laboratory tests, ultrasound scan, and so many more. So visit us at our medical center. For those attending our Sunday service for the first time, you are welcome and highly recognized. And I want you to know that this service is specially packaged for you today. The angel of this commission is by your side, and they will give you your miracle in the name of Jesus. 
all owners of motorcycles and tricycles should please endeavor to always park in front of the first auditorium church and ensure that your property is under lock and key and always remember to remove your key subjection buses are provided for feedback we have one at this uh, tent and the other one at the first auditorium lottering around the church during service is prohibited so please as you come sit down and be connected to the holy ghost the, the first auditorium is the children's church, so parents always take your children there. Omega Teens Institute meet every fourth and second Saturday of every month, just for one hour from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. So parents, please release your word to be a part of what God is doing in that institute. There are the purpose that single sisters, they meet every second Saturday of every month. And the time is 12 noon. The venue is the first auditorium. The construction of the global office project is on. Be led by the Holy Ghost to be a part of what God is doing in this great commission. I believe that Omega Fire Ministry is a fertile ground. The anointing is corrosive, volatile. So it's a better place that you can sow. Whatever you are led to do by the Holy Ghost, if it's a trailer load of cement, if it's 5 million, 10 million, 2 million, 1 million, whatever it is, don't disobey the voice of the Holy Ghost. And God will richly bless you in Jesus' name. The use of cell phone during service is prohibited, so please we advise that you switch off your cell phones. Nobody is permitted to move the chair in and out of the two auditorium at any given point in time, please. For any purposes, please. Let's try to comply. Admission into YMTS, Young Minister Training School, is on. Please see the church admin to obtain the application form. And also, admission into OBI, Omega Institute, is on. Visit the admission office also to obtain the form. Our weekly activities are scheduled. Because of the ongoing life in the spirit, which is our 40 days fasting and prayer program, our weekly activities is uh, hereby suspended. I remember that we meet every, every day. The first session is 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And the second session, which is afternoon, is 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Then on Saturday, we have marathon prayer from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. A.M. We want you to be a part of what God is doing in this ministry. On Sunday, towards evening, we meet at our various house fellowship centers. And the time is uh, 5 p.m., just for one hour. And please get a house fellowship manual. For Hosanna conglomerates, we have the Hosanna oil and gas, where we sell petroleum products, including conky gas. We also have the Hosanna package water just behind this tent. At the close of service, please go there. There are phone numbers that are displayed. Call them so that they can supply you hygienic water. We also have Hosanna poultry, where we sell chicken and eggs at affordable prices. Just go to Hosanna Oil and Gas and ask, and they will show you the place. We also, have Hosanna, uh, we also have laundry services located within the shopping complex. We have Hosanna Jean located at Ebenezer Mall. Then we also have the Dynamic Event Center for all forms of events. We also have Hosanna Publishers for all digital printing works such as Amalax, calendars, posters, handbill, 
book publications, and so many more. Please visit us and uh, you won't regret it. At our resource center, which is our bookshop, is where we said Papa and Mama's teaching tips in DVDs, CDs, and MP3. We also have books written by our own parents and uh, other materials that you can buy. We have Papa and Mama's wrappers and other accessories, ministry accessories that you can buy includes wristband, breast tag, stickers, lapel pins, necklaces, and many, many more souvenirs you can, you can buy. Watch Voice of Fire Brokers on Celebration TV where the word is ever fresh and preach. Voice of Fire Brokers is also on local radio and TV stations and of course on all available social media platforms. For viewers in Europe, remember Celebration TV is on Sky Channel 598. We are having some technical hitches and uh, we soon be online again. Your tithes, offering, first fruit, and seafood are part of your kingdom commitments. If you want God to bless you, if you want God to rebuild the devourer for your sake, Malachi 3, 10 to 11, don't play with your tithes and don't play with your seeds. Wonders Without Numbers December edition is on. It's an online prayer program with our own father, the Restoration Apostle, and the time is 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. every day, excluding on Saturday. I remember this month, we are looking at the topic, There Shall Be No Laws, and I pray for you that there shall be no laws. Celebration TV launches an internet 24-7 radio app. It's called MISA. And uh, on your screen, you can see the website. HTTP slash MISA dot com slash Celebration TV. It's 24-7 online radio uh, teachings by our father and our parent, our mother. So please connect. Omega Bible Institute says um, bachelor's degree in theology, law, and mercy. We are starting 22nd of January 2022. And of course, remember that our fasting is still ongoing. Our 40 days fasting, we started on the 4th of December. Is running through 11th of January 2022. We want you to be a part of what God is doing here. Our current night is coming up on the 23rd of December. The time is 4 p.m. We want you to invite as many people that you can invite for our current night. Remember the date again is on the 23rd of December. Operation Jabez, which is our prayer to usher us into 2022, is at hand. We are starting on the 29th through 30th of December 2021. And of course, uh, the test of this month, which is the last day, is loaded with a lot of activities. Uh, that 31st is going to be our fire night. And it's still going to be our crossover night and also the supernatural night. So we want you to invite your relatives, your friends, your peers, and your colleagues. Let them spend their crossover at Omega Fire Ministry at the International uh, Headquarter. Amen. Invite them to come. Who crosses you over to New Year matters, and the place where you are crossed over matters a lot. So please keep a date with us, 29 through the 31st of December. Um, wedding bells are ringing in Omega. Hallelujah. We have this one coming up. 
between Dr. Braima Ohai Keti and Sister Sedu Saratu Omosibo Divine. The date of this wedding is 24th December 2021. The time is 10 a.m. And uh, the venue is here at the International Worship Center. The location is at St. John's Secondary School, Foga. Somebody say, my time has come. Preservation. God bless you today. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Some persons are still doing their annual Thanksgiving. If you hear your name, please just come out. You drop your, your Thanksgiving seat on the altar and you walk back to your seats. Deacon and Mrs. Charles Obey. Mr. and Mrs. Abu Loki, Edda and Dickiness, Musa Peter, Mrs. Ikodo, Selina, come now for your special Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. My God, you are wonderful. My God, you are Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. My God, you are. If you know that the Lord is so good to you, just stand to your feet. Praise His holy name. Lord, you are kind. Traffic Department, Pastor Mrs. Agra Steven, Mrs. Charity Ugam, come now for your Thanksgiving. Hey, my Lord is good.
Alléluia. Pastor and Mrs. Eric Bai Ohime. Mr. and Mrs. Eric Imafe. Then those that got wedded yesterday. Mr. and Mrs. Solomon Jacob. Mr. and Mrs. Friday James. Come now for Thanksgiving. Who is greater than Jehovah Lord Divine? Who is stronger than Jehovah Lord Divine? Oh, we call him. We call him. We call him. We call him. There is no one greater than Jehovah Lord Father, to you all. To you, Jesus. To you, Jesus. I want you to celebrate the grace of God upon the life of our Father, the grace of preservation from January. You just have one more Sunday left for this year to end. Please celebrate this God. Celebrate this God. This God is good. Is good all the time. The Lord is good. Preservation. Please, I want you to celebrate with the testifier and you'll be the next to testify this morning. The following are appreciating God for adding another year to their age. Bro David Felix, Sister Juliet Akazogi, Sister Joy Usman, and the mother. Promise Obu, Master Emmanuel Abolaji, Mrs. Joy Innocent, God's favor Maliki, Mrs. Lizzie Austin, okay, okay. I appreciate Jesus. The following are appreciating God for good result. Zoke Maliki, Gospel for Maliki, Blessing Maliki, Blessing Oaso Moje. Please appreciate Jesus. The following are as well, they are appreciating God for financial favor during the week. Osage P, Jeremiah Benjamin, favor Osage. Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Wilson Sunday is appreciating God for their marriage anniversary. 
Mr. and Mrs. Innocent Maliki as well, appreciating God for 13 years marriage anniversary. Mr. and Mrs. Ogudu Sivanos, they are as well appreciating God for seven years marriage anniversary. The following are appreciating God for Johnny Mercy to and from various destinations. Dickness Betty Takim, Aminu Treasure Juliet, Mike Uchechi, Odio Mustafa, Ellen Favor, Christiana Ghana, Pastor Uche Nachuku, Osage Peace, Victory Eherbi, Dickin Kadri Jeniu, Pastor Thomas Azeke. Please appreciate Jesus. Otuya gives is thanking God for preservation upon his life as a transporter. And secondly, God empowers. Hallelujah. Secondly, God empowers him to set up a business of his own for, for the wife. I appreciate Jesus. Mr. Meshach Ibafidon is thanking God for blessing his son with a new car. Napoleon Egeon is thanking God for divine preservation of life in his family. Emmanuel Uge, Uge is thanking God for successful completion of his NYC program. Lisi Ijebai is thanking God for preserving the family from accident. Promise who is treating God from severe pains after using the oil blessed by Papa. Prince Joshua Moses is that God heal him from a swollen neck during the week. Sister Perez White is telling God healing her from abdominal pains. Mr. Zika Henry is thanking God for healing him from severe pains in his throat. <laughs> Mrs. Ejedawe Kellen Selin is thanking God for healing her, her daughter and giving them financial favor. <laughs> Sister Api Akibe is also thanking God for healing from fever and also granting her journey mercy from a burden. <laughs> Sister Isabel Simon is thanking God for healing her from malaria and God gave her, preserve, gave her sister preservation from accident. <laughs> sister Imora Blessing is thanking God for healing her from malaria and typhoid during the week. Bro, precious Jonathan is thanking God for using Papa and Mama to bless him financially. To bless him financially. <laughs> Sister Rashida, to goodness, is, is thanking God for healing. Hallelujah. Sister Rashida, to goodness, is thanking God for healing from fever. Mr. and Mrs. Abraham Augustine from Protocol is appreciating God. He said God gave the family a bouncing baby girl. <laughs> Sister Abu Blessing and Victory Ehiabi. He said God gave, God gave them financial favor. After sowing a seed to the project that is ongoing. Appreciate Jesus. <laughs> sister Dora Izuage is a, a sister put to bed safely a bouncing baby girl. <laughs> Brother
Bro Stanley Zion and Sister Precious Imola, they are appreciating God for successful completion of their one year NYC program. <laughs> Mrs. Ramatu Salu is a God preserver and family from fire accident. <laughs> Bro Prince Ahmed is thanking God for successful freedom last week, Sunday. And uh, Sister Favor Ochua as well, is, is also thanking God for successful freedom yesterday. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Solomon Jacob, they are thanking God for successful wedding ceremony yesterday. <laughs> I believe if you want to get wedded, please you can clap better. Dickin uh, Solomon Grace as well is thanking God for successful wedding of the son yesterday. <laughs> Sister Joy Usman appreciating God for saving her from satanic manipulation. <laughs> Sister Florence Joseph is thanking God for intervening in the life of her auntie's health. Sister Api Ejiomofo is thanking God for successful three weeks orientation camp in Jaws. He said there were several attacks, several robbery on the road, but because her father prayed for them, she was preserved, and she is also appreciating God for financial favor from Papa and Mama. Mrs. Vincent Juliana is thanking God for saving her from fire outbreak in her house last week. <laughs> Mr. Esemokai Donald is a God preserving and family from snake attack. <laughs> Mr. Kate Mama is thanking God for giving him and family great deliverance. <laughs> Pastor Mrs. Augusta Epogome is thanking God for two years anniversary of our grandson, Tirimiolua Alao. Please appreciate God for her. Please quickly, if you hear your name, come forward for your testimony. Mrs. Nga Charity and her daughter, Dominio. Sister Gift Ibrahim. Bro Jima Goodness, Mrs. Joy Inusa, Bro Bola Clement, Dickness Stephanie Agbonica, Mr. Prince Okiri from Abuja, Mrs. Doris Okomi. Please celebrate Jesus as they come forward. Mrs. Ngam Charity, please come forward. Celebrate Jesus. The daughter, Dominio, she was beaten by a snake, rushed to the hospital, receiving treatment that was no good response. She took her phone and sent an SMS to Mama, and Mama prayed. After the prayer, the pain stopped, and that same day, she was discharged from hospital. She is also appreciating God for healing. She was having a serious pain while involved in an accident. But during the Jehovah, the doctor, in amazing grace, Papa lay hand on her, and after that, the pain disappeared. She's here to appreciate Jesus. Please appreciate Jesus. Appreciate Jesus with a shout. Mr. Prince Okiri. 
appreciate is appreciating Jesus for victory. If you love victory, please celebrate Jesus. He was having a court case that have lasted for almost seven years. He says in 2014, they have been going to court and coming. But this time around, he said to himself, say, no, I want to come to Hauchi. I will not leave until I receive my victory. He came to Hauchi here and he was connecting to prayers. And on, he said, on Saturday, he met with Papa and Papa prayed for him. He said, after the prayer, the following week on Friday, they rule to his favor. Yeah, appreciating God for giving him victory. Appreciate Jesus with a shout. Bro, Jima Goodness. First of all, he wants to appreciate Jesus for giving him salvation. He was a Muslim before, now he's a Christian. Please celebrate Jesus. He said, at first, it was the wife that first got converted. It was the wife that now brought him to church. He said, that was, he, he became a member, he came to Auchi and he became a member three months ago. He said, from there, as he started connecting to prayers, became a full member of the church, he said, he never knew that God bless someone like that. Within three months, God bless him. He bought a land. He bought another land with a building. He bought a bike last week. This week, he bought another bike. He said, this is God. Please celebrate Jesus with him. That is a supernatural turnaround. Sister Gift Ibrahim. Sister Gift Ibrahim. Okay. Mrs. Joy Inusa. Mrs. Joy Inusa, he said the brother wife was already due for delivery. She went to the hospital and the doctor said already booked the, the woman for an operation with a date. The brother called, him, called her and said, look at what I'm passing through. Please pray for us. She came to the altar and called on the God of Apostle Joshua Man to intervene. He said, before that date that the, the wife was booked, she put to bed safely without operation. She wanted to appreciate Jesus because he said the first child was with operation. But this one was without operation. Appreciate Jesus for her. Robola Clement. Our brother is appreciating God for supernatural touch of God through the oil of joy. He was suffering from a strange attack. He said the throat, there was something around the throat and the anus. For four days, he was not comfortable. He now remember the oil that was blessed by our father. He drank it and slept. He woke up and all the pains Disappear. Today is free to the glory of God. We say Jesus. Mrs. Doris Okomi. Preservation. Preservation. Our mommy is testifying to the glory of God for the preservation hand of God upon our life and family. Is there she has a shop in Avile. One day during the week on, on Friday, from nowhere, a trailer loaded with cow was heading directly to the shop. He said it broke all the chairs that they were sitting on, but she wanted to appreciate this because no one was hurt and nobody died. 
appreciate Jesus for how we they shout. Stephanie Agonica. She wants to appreciate Jesus for also preservation. On Tuesday, he said there was a serious traffic along the road. She was there. She said, Suddenly, the car just exploded. She said the car, the, all the, the front was burned. But after that, God changed her story. He said, somebody favor her with a new car. He's here to appreciate Jesus. I believe you want a new thing to happen in your life. Please rise on your feet and connect to her the testimony. Let's give to the Lord this morning. Please, if you are still sitting there, I'd like you to be on your feet. Somebody say, my time has come. Say it louder. Say, my time has come. Father, we thank you. Lift it up above your head. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. Thank you for another wonderful time. The privilege you have given to us, Lord, to come into your presence. And Lord God Almighty, with our hands lifted up with our offerings this morning, we ask, Lord, that you accept us and accept our offerings in the name of Jesus. By reason of this offering today, our lives will begin to go forward and will continue to enjoy advancement and open doors in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree from glory to glory will continue to go and we ask for a supernatural abundance in our lives in Jesus mighty name somebody give the Lord a shout of praise give the Lord a shout 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 yeah. are you ready to dance tell somebody say put on your dancing shoes let the person hear you. Say, put on your dancing shoes. Let me hear you again. Say, put on your dancing shoes. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, oh, walk by you. I want you to misbehave. Say, this is my father's house. Take off your shoe, you are allowed, you are permitted to do. Oh, 
anybody everybody scream out if you know it's not by your might it's not by your power it's not by your strength it's not your wisdom it's not your capacity it's not because you know too much that has brought you to this stage in this year if you know Jesus has been everything from January somebody leave your seat and shout hey! come on see tell your neighbor tell your neighbor tell your neighbor tell your neighbor say even if I misbehave it is not enough so leave me to shout oh! hallelujah hallelujah if you know Jesus has been everything to you come on just wave your hands and give him praise just worship him we are here this morning to just say Jesus you are everything and everything it's you hallelujah come on now you are the first the last beginning and the end in you are living moving you I have my being yeah you hold my life my word my future all in your hands and you knew my name before time began and there is absolutely nothing you can do absolutely nothing compares to you I just want to be here. Yeah. Say, yeah. I just want to be here. Yeah. You make all things. Nothing else to do. I'm in love. You are everything. Everything. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is yours. Everybody shout out. Oh. My future all in your hands. And you know my name before time began. And there is absolutely nothing you can do, Jesus. Absolutely nothing compares to you. Everybody say, I just want to be here. Oh! 
some mercy I'm hungry I'm thirsty your love and your grace and I just need to taste it your peace and your passion your joy me compassion and you got it I need it I just gotta have it I know some people with my money that we ever see ever since I'm about private island and ever see ever see ever see on the open and the God take a jack around your block and move ever see your stock now in this lifetime someone in my point of honor did I believe it come on but they believe it comes and every day that I'll fall peace of mind but the price up for the hell you are Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap. Let's receive our tithe this morning. We are still in the mood for thanksgiving. We are still thanking God. The whole of December is a mood of thanksgiving. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Lift it above your heads and let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege to tithe. We decree that the devourer is rebuked perpetually. We decree, O oh Lord, that the windows of heaven are open unto us. In Jesus' name. Promotion everywhere. Contracts everywhere. Plenty money everywhere. Because you lead me every day. I say I like it, all. Oh, say I like the way you lead me, all. Oh. Promotion everywhere, contracts everywhere, plenty money everywhere. Cause you they lead me every day. I say I like it, oh. Can you say? Seven, my faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary.
January to February to March to April to May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Just thank him again. Thank him. Keeping you healthy, strong, and alive. Fighting seen and unseen battles. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him and thank him. Thank him. Kola basha tala mandra kasa. Oh, ra 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 We want to thank you. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. We thank you for life. We thank you. Father, we thank you. I am grateful. Oh, Lord. I am grateful, Lord. I am grateful. Oh. For you have done for me, 
Thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Oh, I give you thanks for all you have done in Allah. I am so blessed. My soul has found rest. Give you all the things from my heart. For all and adoration today in Jesus name we worship clap your hands to the Lord Amen Matthew 25 and verse 6 Matthew 25 and verse 6 
Matthew 25, verse 6. Matthew 25. Have we found it? Verse 6. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Can we take that again? After the count of two, I want us to read it together after the count of two. One, two, go. At midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out. One more time. One, two, go. The bridegroom comet. That is the topic of my message. And I want to see if we can handle that this Sunday and next Sunday. The bridegroom comet. Somebody say the bridegroom comet. I want you to say that well. The bridegroom comet. Say it again. Again. One more time. Now this is a very familiar story. Many of us have read it. Many of us have Hard songs. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. How many of us know that song? Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. When I was just born again, I used to think that song was, give me oil in my lamp, give me money. I used to, that's what I used to sing. Give me oil in my lamp, give me money. Give me, that's what I used to sing until they said, no, it's not give me money, it's keep me burning. I said, oh, I didn't know that it's keep me burning. Amen. Amen. Now, the place where we read from, Jesus was speaking a parable. And sometimes, when Jesus wants to talk to matured people, he speaks in parables. He speaks in parables, he gives them a story. A parable is an earthly statement with an heavenly meaning. Is it an earthly statement with a heavenly meaning? So, Jesus, when he wants to tell them some very direct and strong truths, he presents it as parables. And he throws it to them for them to understand. And most times, if you want to understand the depth of Jesus' teaching, go to the parables of Jesus. Take out time to study other parables, and you understand the nature and the life of Jesus. So he was given a parable, and this parable is said to them that the kingdom of heaven is likened. You must understand there is a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God is different from the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is a location. The hope of all believers at our transition. When we leave this world, we'll be the kingdom of heaven. But the kingdom of God is a life, is a program. It's not a location. A program. The Bible says in the book of Romans 14, 17, Let no man tell you, he said, The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. When you say the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It means the kingdom of God is when the king begins to live inside you and you begin to manifest righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is when the king comes into you. And that is why if you see Jesus used those words interchangeably. It was not a mistake or an error. Sometimes we say kingdom of God, sometimes we say kingdom of heaven. It was very specific. When he's talking about the end of all believers, he talks about the kingdom of heaven. When he's talking about how a believer should live, he talks about the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of heaven is what we are considering here. The ultimate end of everyone who is a believer. Whatever everyone has today, money, properties, whatever, there's a time that will come that everything we own physically will become meaningless. The mistake Adam made was when Adam saw the garden, Adam thought the garden was the ultimate. You never knew the garden was the blueprint on what it should make the world become. The garden was the introduction of what it should turn the whole world into. The garden was a blueprint of how the world should be. God wanted Adam to replicate the garden of Eden all over the world. But as far as Adam was concerned, he felt that was the ultimate. It's like a man who gets a car. A man who gets a building, gets a house. And he's so relaxed, thinking that that is all life has to offer. Not knowing that that is just the introduction on what God wants to do in his life. So God wants to use that to open him up so that he can have a platform when he begins to tell his story. He can have a platform to say, this is how I started. So Jesus was talking to them. He said, the kingdom of heaven is likened up to unto ten virgins. 
It's like an unto temple. We know the word virgin means one who has kept his or herself, one that has been unspotted. And if you read Ephesians 5.17, 527 sorry Ephesians 527 that is what the Bible calls us he says to present the church unto himself without spot blemish or wrinkle first Peter 119 he says God also talks about us being spotless amen second Peter 314 Jude 123 when in the book of Jude 1 I think 23 or so he said what is the religion that's on the fire one that has been kept unspotted from the world so God was talking about them, but there are some truths in that story that I want to explain before we go straight into getting now just two very important revelations. The Bible said there were ten virgins. I expected the Bible to say there was a virgin. If God has used one, he would have still driven home his point. If Jesus had used two, he would have said one was wise, one was foolish. Is that not correct? Is that not correct? Five year wise, five year foolish. Five year wise, five year foolish. Five year wise, why five? He's talking about virgins and he said five. See if virgin means one who has kept himself or herself from sin. And Jesus said five wise virgins, five foolish virgins, and we know that five is the number of grace. He was trying to say to keep yourself in this world, you need grace. It takes the grace of God for a man to stand out. Everything, Paul made it clear in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. I am what I am by the grace of God. Everyone who wants to thrive in life, Genesis chapter 6 verse 9, Noah found grace. Genesis 39 verse 4, you see, and Joseph found grace. It takes grace to stand out. In Psalm 84 verse 11, I believe, the Lord God is a son and a shield. He will give grace and glory, and no good thing will live with all from them that walk uprightly. Psalm 84 verse 11. Now, grace is what helps a man to stand out. In Zechariah chapter 12, I think it is verse 10 or 10, 12, it says that there's a spirit of supplication, the spirit of grace and intercession. Grace is what helps a man to stand out. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8, he said God, he said God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you having sufficiency in all things will abound unto every good work in second corinthians 8 9 for we know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich for your sake he became poor and that you through his poverty might become rich somebody shout grace say grace five were wise five were foolish so in our walk with god it is not expertise it is grace it is grace Grace is what helps you to stand. Grace is what helps you to, to walk with God. Nobody should be proud. Nobody should be arrogant because it is grace. What is given to every one of us is a measure of grace. If somebody is financially blessed, listen to me. Anybody can teach you hard work. People can teach you work hard. Do this, do that. The truth of the matter is a man's principle may not work for you. Everybody must know what works for him. Because that is why nobody can tell you these are the keys of success. Somebody can only tell you keys of success. Not these are the keys because nobody has the key. What works for somebody may not work for somebody else. So you cannot bring your story as a platform or a pretoria or a platform or a premise through which everyone will build their success. Somebody can be praying three times. You know, it's like somebody said, I prescribe seven days fasting and prayer for you. That is the key. No. Somebody might, by the third day of a fast, somebody might get an answer. Somebody in my fast for 10 years and there's no answer. It is grace. It is grace. You see, Elijah was a prophet. A prophet of God, but he was poor. That was why during the time of famine, God kept sending him to people to sustain him. One, God sent you to animal. Go and meet him. Just imagine, bed, bed. You are depending on bed to feed you. First Kings 17 verse 4. God said, I've commanded the ravines to sustain them. And if you know ravens, ravens are not known to be animals who spare. When somebody is very consumptive, somebody is very consumptive and somebody who has a voracious and terrible appetite, they say you have a ravenous appetite. The appetite of eat everything, consume everything. A raven is not a bird that spares. A raven is a greedy and gluttonic bird. It wants to eat everything. And God sent Elijah to that kind of stingy bird to take off Elijah. And listen, whether divine provision or not divine provision, a raven is a raven. So imagine Elijah sitting down and waiting for a raven to spare 
in food. In other words, when the bed comes, as the bed is eating, Elijah's prayer point is, Father, touch the heart of this bed to remain small for me. A ravenous habitat. So God sent him to a raven. Look at the man called Elijah again. First Kings 17 verse 9. God sent him to a widow. God sent him to a widow. And this time around, if you were there, when Elijah was practicing how to fulfill prophecy before this widow, you'll be angry. The child was hungry. The mother was hungry. The woman said to Elijah, my child and I want to eat and die. This is our last meal. Elijah said, give me. He said, you didn't hear what I said. I said, this food I'm preparing now is our last meal. We want to eat and die. He said, I know. Give me. Let me repeat it. In a circle. Yeah, hey. <laughs> he said, since you, since you don't understand you don't understand. Elijah said, this food is our last meal. We want to eat and die. Give me. You know, as I've worked with God for a while, I can tell you God is not nice. He's a good God. He's not a nice God. There's a difference between being nice. God does not pet you. When God wants to raise you up, he drills you. He doesn't pet you. If you are really working with God, he will drill you. And he doesn't care how you feel. He doesn't care whether you are hot. When God wants to do some things in your life, God will make you feel pain. When God wants to arrange a man's life, God will make you feel pain. But anytime in our pain, can I say this to you? Can I say this to you? In our success, God whispers to us. In our pain, he screams at us. In our success, God whispers. In our pain, is God screaming. To say, I'm correcting some things. I'm fixing some things. I'm balancing some things. Whenever you are going through pains, you are going through a lot of shaking, God is the one screaming, trying to communicate something to you. Ignore the pain and listen to the message. What is it that the Lord is trying to tell me over this matter? What is God trying to communicate to me? And that becomes a problem when you go, you, you, you go through that and not learn. And that's why I tell people, experience is not, people say experience is a good teacher. No, experience you learn from is what is a teacher. Am I talking to somebody here? Look this way. Look this way. Why will God Almighty not use the word? There were two virgins. One was wise. One was foolish. How many of you know if God had said that, he would have still communicated his message? There were two virgins. One wise, one foolish. One this, one that. But it's just five virgins. Wise. Five foolish. Five, the number of grace. So it takes grace to be a virgin. It takes grace to keep yourself. It takes grace to live pure. That's one point. Number two, he said there were ten virgins. I need you to understand, many of us think we are the only holy people. But God said I should tell you there were ten virgins. You think you are the only one. There's a way you begin to walk with God that you see everybody as a sinner. It's called charismatic witchcraft. There are many churches that believe that God is not anywhere except in their church. There were ten virgins. There are so many people that are walking with God and they pray and pray and pray and pray and at that point they see that F, you know, sometimes when you think you are prayerful, you think you have prayed so much, you think nobody is praying, you think you got the letters. In fact, there's a level a man can pray to and pray to and he starts seeing everybody like, in fact, he will look at the church as a sinful church. He wants to go to, he wants to be alone. I just want to be alone. There were 10 virgins. When you think that serving God does not pay, you are thinking that following God has no reward. You, you think that you are living a lonely life by following God. There were 10. What does that tell you? You are not the only one who is seeking God. One time Elijah felt that everything had packed up and he felt that he was the only one who was working with God. And God said, there are 7,000 who have not bowed their knees to bow, not kissed the idols. 7,000 of them. Elijah was shocked. But my only problem with those 7,000, where were the 7,000 when Elijah was being chased? Elijah ran from, Elijah, the man of fire, he ran from Jezebel. He took off. Jezebel said to the husband, he said, why are you bothered about Elijah? By this time tomorrow, Elijah's head, I would dismember it, I would disconnect it, I would take it off from his body. When Elijah heard that his head I don't know why the kings of those days like taking off people's heads because it was also Elisha's head. They wanted to take in 2 Kings chapter 6 and they began to prophesy. He said, God do more to me if the head of Elisha is on his neck today. I will take off his head. 
And Elijah, mm, he said, no, this cannot happen. But Elijah took off. Elijah took off. They said, we are going to kill you by this time tomorrow. So he ran from that city. When he ran, he went and stayed under a juniper tree and began to cry. He said, Lord, kill me, just kill me. When I read that, I said, look at this man. The woman that wanted to kill you was around. You ran. If you really wanted to die, it's just to go walk into the trap. So most times, what people say in the midst of pain, they don't really mean it. He said, kill me, kill me. I'm the only one left. Kill me. I'm not better than my fathers. First Kings 19 verse 4. I'm not better than my fathers. This was a man who had become a major prophet. A man who had been used by God. A man who had confronted powers. A man who had met with kings. But in his day of pain, he said, I'm not better than my fathers. Most times in our pain, in our struggle, we easily forget what God has done. One of the biggest problems, and that is why you must constantly remind yourself, when God gives you a testimony, write it down. Make it bold. Whenever you are going through all the times of being downcast, the times of rejection and pain, start going through those testimonies. God did this for me. God did that for me. God did this for me. God, don't build yourself. Because sometimes the devil always makes you forget what God has done. Am I communicating? There were ten. And the Bible says they were together. There were 10 of them and they were together. So I need you to understand that everyone today who has a relationship with God must accommodate someone else. We must be accommodative of someone else, no matter that denomination. Many of us are going to be so shocked and surprised that there are people who are having a walk with God in the most remote churches we never expected. There were 10 virgins. Amen. I said amen. He says in verse 5, why the bridegroom, why they waited, they all tarried and slept. How many of them tarried? I'm, I'm just laying the foundation before I give you just two points. How many of them tarried? Some tarried. Some tarried. Some slumbered. Some slept. I want you to know that in this, your walk with God, there are times you may slumber. Uh, accept it. How many of you know there are times you don't feel like praying? Okay, not everybody. Okay. I'm not you know sometimes you just wake up at night. You say, I wish I can just sleep this night. Just this night. If I can, if I can just rest. Are you following me? You, have, you, have, you want to fast. You just say, today. I, can somebody just eat today? What, no, what will happen? Will somebody die if he eats today? Are you following me? They all slumbered. I told them in America. I say one of the deceptions in the church, one of the biggest deceptions in the church is that people don't know that they are fallible. So, when I mean fallible, you don't know you are susceptible. Susceptible. You don't know you are still a human being. That's what I mean. You are still emotional. Elijah was a man of like passion. There are times when some things happen in your life, don't kill yourself. You react the way you are not supposed to react. You will get angry. Mm, you are still susceptible. Am I talking to somebody here? He says, they all slumbered and slept. Listen to me. Even the greatest of men, the greatest of men still slumbers. The greatest of spiritual giants still sleeps. So God is not angry when we slumber. God's anger is when we don't wake up from our slumber. God's anger is not when we slumber. God's anger is when we don't wake up from our slumber. Am I communicating here? God's anger is when we don't wake up. One day, a, 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 a bishop, a great bishop was angry, took his key and threw it at somebody. And the person, you know, the thing landed on his head and he started bleeding. And someone came to me and said, can you see what the bishop has done? I said, what did he do? He said, he threw his key at somebody in anger. The person is bleeding. I said, okay, what next? What did he do? He said, he threw his key at somebody and the person is bleeding. I said, hey, I've heard you. What did he do? He said, he threw his key at somebody. I said, get out of here. He's called man of God. He's not God of God. So he threw his key and so what, what did he do? We must get to that point where we understand that you are fallible. Sometimes you yell. Sometimes you went to fast. You just put something in your mouth. Hey, I forgot. Don't sit there and say, oh Lord, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. The God that I know is not that God that will carry one rod and say, I told you to fast today. And you ate food. Bring your head, bring your head, bring your head. 
that's not the God I follow. The God that I know is a God. When you say, Lord, oh, he will tell you, there is tomorrow. That's the God I know. You know, we have, paint, we have painted God, we have painted God as one God that is standing and is holding one stick. You didn't go to church today, Abby. And I discovered that when we became, I remember in this town, in this town, there was a, a time somebody was preaching the gospel and told everybody that Jesus is going to come soon. Jesus will come soon. People sold their things, sold their property in this town, sold everything. And I came out, I said, listen, Jesus is coming soon, but there is no fixed date. He gave a date. He gave a date. I know some spare parts seller who sold all their things. All of them left the house, carried their notes, sold television, sold carpet, sold chair. And I was already preaching them. And I said to them, I said, Jesus is coming. He said, not even him knows the date. Only the father. I said, so from that scripture, I don't agree with what this guy is preaching. And he was my friend. And he began to preach against me. He said, actually, God showed him clearly that I'm going to hell. So it was everywhere. I was going, sit down, sit down, don't worry. It was everywhere that I was going to. I said, no problem, no problem, no problem. But I'm telling you what I know from the Bible, Jesus will come soon. They went down there to a school in town where they were doing their fellowship. And um, they put a big poster with my picture, um, Agent of Darkness. They put um, hell, da, da, uh, hell bound. They put all kinds of things. I've been going through this for a long time, so don't worry. <laughs> they put all these things and I went there, I looked at it, people were angry. I said, leave them, no problem. But I'm still standing that that date he gave, Jesus is not coming that date. I said, because except the Bible is not real. I said, I believe Jesus is coming. I said, he can come before that date. He can come after that date. He will not come that date. So, there are people in town who had so much. They sold it. I know a man who, was, who sells spare parts. He was so rich. This guy sold everything. And this was the problem I had. While he was selling his things, this guy who said Jesus was coming that day did not sell anything. He didn't sell anything. I was looking at him. His cars were still in his compound. His chairs were still in. I visited in the chair. I said, you didn't sell your chair. Are you not expecting Jesus? He didn't sell anything. That day came. And passed. All of them, started, as I speak to you now, one quarter of those people are in the world. There's nothing you will tell them. Some of them have gotten, you know what I'm talking about, travel to where they travel to to become allergies and all of that. They've left them. Why? Because he threatened them to God. You don't threaten people to God. You make them fall in love with God and love God. And that's why a young man went with me. We went to go and win souls. This guy didn't go to win souls. He went to scare souls. He did not to win souls at all. He would call somebody. Did they smoke? Did they smoke? Hell fire. He wasn't winning souls. He was scaring souls. So I called him. I said, you're not winning souls. He said, leave me. Is it not a sin? I said, it's not like that. You see another one? Say, come, come. Come. Revelation. They shall have their part in the lake of fire. Lake, lake, fire. You will burn from morning to night, morning to night. You will cry, cry, cry. No water, no water. As you comprehend, fire burn you from back. As you go from, fire burn you from front. So people were scared. Are you following what I'm saying? So you must get to understand that the God that we serve, if you must enjoy, if you must get to the kingdom and make the kingdom of heaven, you must enjoy God. You must get to that point when God is your friend. When you have a relationship with God that is out of love, what do I say? Lord, it doesn't matter what I'm going through. I love you. I'm not following you all because I'm afraid of hell. I'm following you because I love you. I'm walking with you because you are everything to me. I'm walking with you because there's no life outside you. You cannot walk like that and miss heaven. It's like a student who is not ready for exam. He's ready to understand the course. At the end of the day, he becomes a five-pointer. Not because he's ready for an exam. He loves the subject. As he loves and falls in love with the subject, automatically, the sky is his starting point. Those that read for exams are always under pressure during exams. 
But those that read, those who study hard, because they love that school subject, they love that course, guess what? They come up and turn out well. Glory to God. They all slumbered and slept. I remember then when I want to pray by 3 a.m. and I sleep and open my eyes, it's past four. Oh my God. Throughout that day, I'm down. I say, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh Lord Jesus. And I know the Holy Spirit is silent. Because at that point, what is, what is crying is emotion. That's why he says that human sorrow does not work the righteousness of God. This God that we are talking about. Why the bridegroom tarry? They all slumbered and slept. But what God wants is that wake up from your slumber. Somebody say wake up. Where it becomes a problem is when you slumber and from slumbering you, you, you just pass out. You slumber from slumbering. You go into oblivion. Am I talking to somebody here? I'm trying to balance it because some people say, hey, you see now, Papa, you see, Papa said it. If you wake up and you know people slumber. I'm saying don't hit yourself hard when you slumber. There are, how many of you agree that there are times your body does not feel like praying? Okay, let me tell you something. Have you noticed the very period you said today, this night, ah, fire, fire. <laughs> fire, fire. Fire, fire. Fire will fall. Once is exactly 10 p.m. Fire, kaba shakata. Kekusata mintro bakadia. You get to seven. Hey. Fire will fall. You turn off your phone. You do everything. When it gets to 9.30. When it gets to 10, your body is so tired. Your body is broken. You say, mm. if fire go fall today, it go fall tomorrow. <laughs> Then on the bed you say, Seta, say, Seta, Seta, you think you have won hmm, tomorrow? <laughs> I will deal with you too. <clears throat> Let somebody, you know, what you did was that you were making your boast in the flesh, and God was trying to let you know. First Samuel chapter two verse nine. For by strength, man, okay. Praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody now? The Bible said they ran out of oil. But look at this. I don't know if I should do Okay, maybe I'll do this next Sunday. Let me just move on. I'll give that other point next Sunday. I've taken so much time. Eh? I'm no Okada. Don't tell me to ride on. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Mm. Now, look at this. The Bible says, five, ten verses, five wise, five foolish. Five wise, five foolish. The bridegroom comes. In our expecting the bridegroom, there are two major factors that are very salient, but they are very predominant in those passages. Five wise, five foolish. In expecting the bridegroom, you need wisdom. Wisdom. Meaning there are many virgins. When I say what virgins, I mean pure, living pure. There are many people walking with God. But there is multiplicity of stupidity. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, Jesus was advising them. He said, be wise as serpents. I'm less as though. Colossians chapter 4 verse 5. He said walk with wisdom towards them that are without. Redeeming the time. For the days are evil. Ephesians 3 verse 10. To the intent the principalities and powers might be made known the manifold wisdom of God. What God wants us to teach the devil. What God wants us to make the devil know is the wisdom of God. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. The many sided. Bring other translations. You are going to be so shocked and, and seeing what other translations say. 
He says, in order that the present time, by means of the church, the angelic rulers and the powers of the heavenly world, my land of the wisdom, of his wisdom, in all his different forms, in all his different forms, truly Christians like yourself, gathered in churches, this extraordinary plan of God is becoming known and talked about even among angels. God is talking about the wisdom of God. He said the purpose of this was to unveil before every throne and rank of angelic order in the heavenly realm, God's full and diverse wisdom revealed through his church. There's a dimension of wisdom God wants to reveal to the world. There's a dimension. He says, so now through the church, the, this is what I'm looking for, the multifaceted wisdom of God in all his countless aspects might be made known, revealing the mystery to angelic rulers and authorities in heavenly places. What God wants to release through the church, a dimension, a revelation of God that the world will see, that will shock demons, is called the wisdom of God, the kind of wisdom, the kind of idea, the creative ability, the wisdom to create, the wisdom to form, the wisdom to make things be. God wants us to live with that kind of wisdom. In 1 Kings 4 verse 34, we see a man called Solomon operating in uncanny, uncommon wisdom and largeness of heart. God gave Solomon wisdom and largeness of heart. The Bible says in 1 Kings 3 and verse 28 that when Solomon had spoken concerning the two women and that little child that was alive. He said, for all Israel saw that the wisdom of God was in Solomon to do judgment. Wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. They were virgins, but many were foolish. So holiness without wisdom is charismatic affliction. I Meaning somebody can have the fear of God and equally have bankruptcy of stupidity. He fears God, but he doesn't have sense. He fears God, Nobody's following me. Are you following me? He fears God. She fears God. But there's bankruptcy of wisdom. There's no sense. Nothing. So does it mean somebody can be following this God and yet be foolish? Yes, sir. Somebody can be following God and yet the person lacks financial wisdom. Financial wisdom. Purity of heart. Purity of heart does not guarantee financial intelligence. Can I repeat that? Purity of heart does not guarantee financial intelligence. Financial intelligence tells a man that any money that comes to your hand, you remove your tithe, you remove whatever offering for the poor, you must remove what to save. You must have savings at least 30, 40%. You must keep it. Don't touch it. Financial intelligence tells a man that it is, it is, it is abysmal. It is, a, a, it is it's laughable for your expenditure to be more than your income. Purity does not teach you that. You need financial intelligence. Financial intelligence tells you that for you to spend money, you must first check your inflow. So there are many people today who are holy and broke because they are stupid. I'm not, I wish you can, you can separate the two. They are working with God quite alright, but they lack financial intelligence. Financial intelligence tells you when you live in a house where you pay year, yearly rent, every August you must pay your rent. It tells you that from the month of August, after you pay, Every month, you begin to take money aside. You take money aside. You take, before 12 months, your rent is already complete. You are not that your rent is August, around July, you start running around people, begging them. No, you are holy, but you are... And I many of you know that's what a lot of people do. I told somebody, I said, you are very anointed. Powerfully anointed. I said, but this part, you have to work on this part. That you have to wait till one month for your rent. You are not praying, sending prayer points to people. God gave you sense so you can rest. There are some things we disturb God about and God already gave us brain. 
Let Archbishop Idaosa said, every head without sense is a load to the neck. Any head without sense is a load to the neck. God wants you to operate in wisdom. What stood Solomon out was wisdom. Solomon knew how to unnest all the wealth of Israel. And that is where we have a problem. This is Christmas season. Everybody wants to spend everything. Want to buy everything Christmas. Buy everything New Year. They don't know that January is five months. There's the real January. There's the, there's the main January. The first week. Second week is the real January. The third week is the actual January. So financial intelligence tells you that anything you are getting this period, you don't spend it. You send it to the bank. You send it to save. You're saving. So that January, where everybody is exhausted, that is where you are celebrating your own Christmas. Where everybody, no, they have nothing. Anybody gives you a blessing now, keep it. Anybody gives you this, keep it. It's not a time to run buy a new shoe, but you're not a child. You're not a child. People that wear new clothes on Christmas are children. You are not a child. I'm not, listen, if you can afford it, if you can afford it, buy it. If you have the money, buy it. But don't look forward to it. Don't look forward. You are looking forward is that. Clothes you can buy every day. You are not looking forward. At your age, you are 40. You want to buy shoe and cloth and glass. And spectacle. Eyeglass and purse. And pause. You know, pause. <laughs> you know, I used to like to, I used to like to just sit down and watch children this period. Every Christmas, they see a child of eight wearing eye here. They are going to go and greet one sister. They will, they will wear those plastic glasses. And they hold their purse. going to greet <laughs> praise God so this is the time I'm giving you wisdom right now don't this is not a period no this is not a period January is coming most wise men keep money for January that's when they start buying things cheaply most of the cars you see that they imported that were not sold people wait in January because those who came from abroad have to travel back so they want to dispose their car. That's the time to buy it. Some people you see now just came. They bought a Jeep. They just want to use the Jeep to display this December gen and they are going back. At a giveaway price, they want to sell it. That money you have saved, you just walk in there. When Bible said the riches of the Gentiles are yours, it means the Gentile will sell cheap. You will have the money to buy. But no, they just give you any money now. Bam, straight, bone straight, straight, new shoe, straight, suits, straight, tie, straight, and set. No, that's not the life to live. Somebody say wisdom. Say wisdom. You can't afford a cow. Must you buy a cow? If you can't buy a cow, buy cow meat. Cow is cow. But why are you looking at me like that? Whether you are the one that killed the cow or somebody that killed the cow, there was a killing and there is a cow. The aftermath effect is that there is cow meat. Go to market, carry your 5,000, carry your 10,000, carry your 20,000. And when somebody says, ah, na cow, say na cow, we kill Nakao we kill. Killing is killing. But many of us want to impress. You just want that mentality that somebody came to your house and they looked behind and they saw a cow. Hi. See, they, they bought a cow. 
Nobody gives an award for that. Amen. Somebody say wisdom. First Kings 5 verse 12. There was peace. Wisdom gives peace. First Kings 10 verse 7. Wisdom gives prosperity. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 1. True desire. A man having separated himself. Intermediate with all wisdom. Somebody have wisdom. Mm, Proverbs 8 and verse 12. He says, I wisdom dwell with prudence. And I find out knowledge of witty invention. Every wise man is an inventor. There is a level of wisdom you start operating. And God begins to give you ideas to create things. There are people in 2022. They will create their own brand. Their own brand of clothes. Their own brand of hair. Their own brand of shoes. God is about to give you idea that will make you an inventor. You will operate in the wisdom of God. The uncanny, uncommon wisdom of God. The uncompromising wisdom of God. I see you by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the force of grace. And by the activity of the Spirit. I see by the character of divinity. You shall operate in the wisdom of God. I send the wisdom of God. I send the wisdom of God. Somebody shout fire, fire, fire. Wisdom. So holiness is not enough. You need what? The wisdom of God. What is wisdom? Locating God's way of doing things. Knowledge is acquisition of information. When you acquire information, you read books, you do all of that, that's your pursuit of knowledge. You read books, you go to school, you do all that, that's your pursuit of knowledge. Acquisition of information. What is understanding? Assimilation of information. Acquisition, assimilation, and what is wisdom? Discharge. Hello? That thing that you have acquired, that thing you have assimilated, your ability to disperse it or dispense it or discharge it is called what? So wisdom is action. Wisdom is displayed, is activated, is unveiled. And that is why we must every day of our life Go for wisdom. 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 What? Go for wisdom. Go for wisdom. So how do I get this wisdom? There are three ways to get wisdom in life. James chapter 1 verse 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. So one way to get wisdom is prayer. God, give me wisdom. I'm about to start this business. They just gave me money for capital. I'm about to invest it. Oh God, let it not be wasted. I need wisdom on how to run with this business. Give me wisdom. Father, on my own, I can do nothing. But I'm, I'm asking you for wisdom. On this business capital, I just sold the only land I have. Father, this is my only landed property. I am believing you that as I invest this money, it will bring more lands. Give me wisdom. May I not end up a waste. I need wisdom. Father, give me uncommon wisdom. So that this business I'm about to do, I know how to pilot it. You need to ask God. I am going to this country, this nation, Father. As I get there, give me wisdom. So that I will operate with divine speed and accuracy. Give me wisdom to meet the right people and interact with them. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. You need to ask God for wisdom. You need to start asking God for uncommon wisdom wisdom because in life if you give a loaded gun to a child if you are not careful you put the trigger on himself wisdom and this is where we have a problem you see there are people that were born i'm sorry i'm sorry to say this there's nobody like that here there are people that were born it's a, gen it's a genetic problem. Everybody is dumb. Everybody. Grandfather, stupid. Father, stupid. Children, stupid. You just see it runs in their family. Everybody. You just see them. Everybody. No intelligence. Nothing at all. So everybody is living a level of struggle. 
If you are from that kind of family, you have to ask God on common wisdom. The Bible says, no man of you having a child ask for a, f a fish and he gives him a serpent. So everyone asks the Holy Ghost and they will give. Somebody say wisdom. You have to get it by prayer. Go to the throne. How many of you know Solomon asked of it? You think Solomon was born with it? Solomon was not born. Solomon prepared. He rehearsed. If you refer to Samuel 3.10, I believe he says, and this speech pleased the Lord. Second Chronicles 1.7. Speech, speech. Sir, people, people prepare speech. To deliver a speech, you have to prepare it. Meaning, even before God gave Solomon that open check, Solomon already prepared what to ask. I said, the day God will, will ask me what I want, I will tell him to give me wisdom. As wisdom came, riches came, prosperity. Wisdom always comes with all its attendant advantages. Wisdom comes with what? Its attendant advantages. Yes, for wisdom. Lift your right hand to heaven. Say, Holy Spirit of God. I can't hear you. Holy Spirit of God. In this journey of destiny, give me wisdom. Take your seat. In Proverbs 13, verse 20, the Bible says, He that walketh with the wise shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. So the second way to acquire wisdom is the company you keep. There is no way you will move with wrong people and be right. There is no way you move with wrong people and be right. The people you move with determines how far you go in life. Your association determines your acceleration. Your company determines what accompanies you. You can never move with speed when you move with a crowd. Moving with a crowd slows your pace. And if the enemy slows your pace, someone else will take your space. Moving with a crowd is better to be alone than to move with a the crowd. There are so many people that you are carrying. You are carrying them. If you won't leave them alone, God Almighty will bruise you while he's pulling them from you. Oh, I've experienced it over and over. When there are people that you have become more compassionate for, more than Jesus, there are people that God wants to suffer, but you want them to enjoy. So God will make you suffer their suffering. You, you didn't get what I said. Let me give you an instance, for example. If this brother or somebody, this sister, whoever, God wants him to learn something, by passing through this road. And because you are so nice, you decide to carry him in a car and give him a lift and not let him walk through that road. God will take that car from you and will bring you back to that road and make you walk through that road. So the prayer we praise, Lord, may I not graduate who you are still schooling. You didn't hear what I said. May I not graduate who you are still trying to school? Who do you follow? Who is your friend? This is 2022. We are entering. Go through your contact. There are some people that must not touch your phone. They must not call you. Just go through your contact. Just start blocking. Just start blocking. And don't, be, don't lie about it. Tja, I reached out. I can't get you again. What happened? I blocked you. What, why are you laughing? It's easy now. Are we calling? No, 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 no. Wherever we see we are friends, but I don't want you to call me. But I've not called you for a while. That's the more reason why I blocked you. There's no, no quarrel about All these lies you are lying. Ah, I was calling you. You didn't pick up. Oh, I was praying. I was resting. I saw it. I didn't feel like picking up. It's your phone. Who bought it for you? The companion. Do you know why Peter and John, they walked into the temple? If it was just Peter or just John, seeing that man by the gate of beautiful lame, his faith would have been withered. But because he was with the right person, 
Peter was with John. John was with Peter. The faith was built up. One shall chase a thousand. Two shall chase ten thousand. A three-fold cord is not easily broken. Man is a relational being. You can never get, you see, no matter, you can never get to a point in your life to say, ah, ah, ah. Hey, people have dealt with me. I won't talk to anybody again. You are joking. You must talk to somebody. But talk to the right person. Man is a relational being. You relate to God, you relate to man. Man relates vertically, man relates horizontally. You must relate to God, you must relate to man. But you must be careful to relate with the right person. Am I talking to somebody here? So when you are, when you are following people, be sure that there are people who are better than you. Don't follow people who you can't get anything mentally from. A man said something last week and we were debating, but later I started thinking about it. I was thinking about it. He said he helps the poor. That God has told him to help the poor. That whenever he sees the poor, he likes to help them. Say, but he cannot be friends with the poor. Uh -uh. I ask him why. What's, what's the man saying? Jesus Christ himself will be friends with the poor. He said, no. He wasn't friends with the poor. He only ministered to the poor. He said, Jesus wasn't friends with anybody. I was telling you that, right? I said, you see John 2, 24. As much as he loved James, loved John. In fact, John the Beloved was 17 years old when Jesus was with him. When Jesus is talking to the disciples, John will put his head on Jesus' chest. That's how close the proximity they had. But when Jesus needed to do things, the Bible says he didn't commit himself to any of them, not even John. He said, because he knew all men. That men at their best are still fallible. So what did Jesus do? He withdrew himself. So the man said to me, he said, help the poor, but don't be friends with the poor. And I said, what am I talking about? He said, because the poor and the stranded, their greatest desire in life is money. And in that process, they will do anything for that money. The blessed, their decision is to stay blessed by maintaining relationships. When you have a friend or a colleague in the office that money drives, money, ah, this money will go make a more, this money will go make a more, you have to be careful because that person has a price. Ah, what do they do? Collect the money, ah, collect the money, collect the money. I beg you, what are you looking at? You know, collect the money. That is already a red light. That is a red light. I don't care who that person is to you now. One day they will sell you. Oh, look at this. <laughs> and the truth is this. People like that do not know. <laughs> I said something, someone, some weeks back. I said, Judas cannot stand betrayer. That's deep, right? Judas cannot stand betrayer. I'm not saying Judas betrayed. Judas. <laughs> Can I explain that to you? Okay, let me explain that. <laughs> when the chief priest and the Pharisees told Judas to bring Jesus to them, what they told Judas was that they are going to arrest him. They never told Judas that they would kill him. That was why when they crucified him, Judas returned their money to them because that was not the plan. You don't get what I'm saying? Judas betrayed Jesus not knowing that he would be betrayed too. So Judas cannot stand people that are betraying you. They can't stand when people betray them. Judas went to kill himself. See how painful. When you saw Jesus, Jesus didn't kill himself. Judas felt pain. Ah! You people lied to me. But you just saw Jesus. As a matter of fact, let me surprise you. Judas never thought Jesus could be arrested and molested. No. He felt that when he come like that and give him a kiss on the cheek 
and they try to touch Jesus, something supernatural. Jesus will just either disappear or just look at all of them like that. They'll just froze and turn to a pillar of salt. You know, Lot's wife. So all the disciples, you look at all the, sorry, the Pharisees and chief priests, pillar of salt, pillar of salt, pillar of salt, pillar of salt. Maybe 50 pillars. He was surprised. They carried him. He was like, ah. They beat him. Ah. They kicked him. Ah. Judas was asking, Yes, there is the power. They molested him. Ah. He was wondering. This man will just touch blind eyes, it will open. If he touch the lame, lame will walk. They are molested. Ah. The next thing, they killed him. He said, No, no, this is not the plan. The Bible says he hung himself. Hello. Hello. He hung. So once you see somebody who is driven by needs, and these are, these are signs. When you see somebody who always like telling you how well they are doing, but don't want to hear how well you are doing. You don't get what I'm saying. Ah, look at what just happened for me. God just did this, did this, did this happen. And I say, yeah, thank God. Hey, me, I just saw somebody, the person told me he's going to pay my school fees, he's going to support me. They will not start preaching to you. Hmm. This is Christmas season, you know. Bomo, bomo is everywhere. Oh. Number three. Second Timothy 3.15. Since thou was a little child, thou was known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation. Second Timothy 3.15. Now, the Scripture. Somebody say the Scripture. Say the Scripture. Carry your Bible up. <laughs> Let me see those that didn't come with Bible. Carry your Bible up. Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive addiction to this book. I receive. If you are in this church now and you are not with a Bible, you already know yourself. Just start feeling bad. Feel bad. Feel bad or feel bad. If you don't feel bad, that you came to church. I don't know where you thought you were coming to. Maybe you thought you were coming to SUG meeting. Lift your Bible. Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive addiction to this book. In the morning, at noon, at night, passion to study this book, I receive it. Take your seat. Hello? You cannot know this book, be addicted to this book, and not know how to handle certain matters in life. Whatever you are looking for in life is already here. It's already here. It's already here. Everything you need in life is available here and is obtainable here. Am I communicating right now? Oh, life is going to bring out its kind. You are going to multiply in life. You are going to bring out the, what is inside of you. The word of God inside of you is what helps you to handle the world outside you. The word inside you is what helps you to handle the world outside you. Look at, <laughs> look at a man called Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat needed water. I'm sure there were many prophets in that land. They didn't go to them. They went to a man called Elisha. Why? He was the one that poured water on the hand of Elijah. You want water? Then you need a man who pours water. You need a man who has had an intercourse with water. Oh, Joe, Pharaoh had a dream. And then there's somebody to interpret the dream. They didn't go to all the prophets in the land. They went to one who was not just a prophet, but a dreamer. It is what is inside you that helps you handle what is outside you. The Bible says, Luke chapter 5 from verse 1, and they pressed on him to hear the word. They put pressure on him to hear the word. Job 23 verse 12, the Bible says, I have esteemed thy word than my necessary food. You must understand the power of the word of God. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 8, where the word of the king is, there is power 
And nobody can say, what doest thou? Hebrews 4.12 makes us know the surgical power. The, the medical and surgical power of the word of God. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8. He said the grass may wither. The flower may fade. But the word of our God abideth forever. Acts 19 verse 20. So grew mightily the word of God and prevailed. Acts 20 32. I commend you to God and the word of his grace that is able to build you and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Colossians 3 16. Let the word of God dwell richly in you. In all wisdom. Seasons may change. Climate may change. Nature may be abused. But the word is constant. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 35, that heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not pass away. As you, as you start studying the Bible, your spiritual mentality, your mindset, your thinking changes. Your thinking changes. Your approach to life changes. Because we see life from the color of our minds. Your, the color of your mind is how you see life. That's why it's not the duty of God to transform your mind. It is your duty. God has saved your soul. It is you that should transform your mind. Be ye transformed. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. I beseech you, therefore I beseech you by the message of God that you present your body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace. To meet the right people. Are you getting anything today? What's the second quality? And we're going to pray. And this is something I need you to be very attentive. The five. Virgins. Foolish. Five wise. The ones that were wise were called wise because they had what? They had what? The ones that were called foolish were called foolish because they did not have extra oil. So as we expect the bridegroom, you need the anointing. So shortage of the anointing can even make someone land in hell. I was surprised. The shortage of anointing can make your Christian journey a misery. Bankruptcy of anointing can make your walk with God a mockery. Oh, but this is a problem. I thought I heard people say, there is not anointing, it's not anointing, you need holiness. Have you, have you heard that word before? It's not anointing, everything is not anointing, you need holiness. But, there's a problem here. We just read that they could not see the bridegroom because they lacked oil. <laughs> but they were virgins. They were holy. Hey, nobody's following me. I thought there are people shouting that you don't need uh, all this anointing, anointing. What you need is holiness. You don't need too much anointing. But yeah! Shortage of oil can become misery to your Christian journey. Bankruptcy of power. What is the anointing? It's the power of God. The anointing is the force of the Holy Spirit. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of God is upon me because he has anointed me. So the anointing is the force of the Holy Spirit. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. and So we see the four dimensions of the anointing in that scripture. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. So the anointing is the conveyor of the Holy Ghost and power. Okay, now let's break it down. Why would the Bible say it's because of oil? They miss the bridegroom. So we need oil. We need oil to confront sickness before it affects our faith. We need oil to confront poverty before it affects our faith. Meaning, if I don't have oil, I don't have the anointing, which is the power of God, I can see a challenge and that challenge can overwhelm me and I can doubt my God and that takes me off track. A 
The sickness overwhelms me because I lack the anointing to confront the sickness. I begin to compromise my faith. Are you seeing the end result? So I need anointing. That was the prayer of Agor in Proverbs 30, 31. Proverbs 30. He said, don't make me poor so that I don't become hungry and curse you. So you need the power to get. What is power? What is power in science? Ability to do work. Is that not what power is? Science. Power is the ability to do work. So the, if the anointing is the power of God, it means the anointing is the ability to do a thing. Anointing for wealth, ability to make wealth. Anointing for fruitfulness, ability to be fruitful. Anointing for increase, ability to increase. So meaning, if you lack the anointing of God, you will see problems in your life, you will see battles in your life, because you can't confront them, it will now start affecting your salvation. Are you, I don't, are you following what I'm saying? Because there's a sickness, a disease, because there's poverty, you that love God so much, you see yourself start compromising your faith. Many are holy, but they lack the anointing. There's a way a lady can walk with God in righteousness because of marital delay, because the power to get married, to break the yoke of delay is not there. You see, what am I waiting for? Age is gone. Let me compromise. So you need the anointing. Without oil, without oil, without oil in your Christian journey, I tell you all the time that power is useless in heaven. There's no sick person there. Power is useless in heaven. God does not need power. Power is useless in heaven. I was, I was asking them in America, how many of them know generator? So they're looking at me, generate what? But if it's Nigeria, my, the question would be, how many of you don't know generator? Because it's almost a part of the house. But they don't need it there. You need the anointing. In your Christian journey, you need power. In this, there is a way demons will molest you, you start doubting God. There is a way witches will make mess of your life. That you carry your Bible, you start looking at the Bible like a tissue paper. There's a way demons will molest the believer. We beat him up, beat him, harass him, buffet him, plume him. And he starts asking God questions. And he starts getting alternative to go outside God. People start giving him alternative ideas. Most of the people, young men today, who have gone into fraud, who have gone into rituals for money. You think most of them went there because their eyes were open? Some of them will look in as much as there's no justification for it. But there are so many of them when they look at their family. Nothing good is happening. So now, oh, Apostle Suleiman hates Yahoo boys. I don't hate Yahoo boys. I hate Yahoo. I don't hate Yahoo boys. Why will I hate them? They are human beings. They are good guys. In fact, they are intelligent. You can't be a fool and do that thing. They don't sleep. Are you following me? But I'm saying, what I'm saying, why not use that brain? Channel it the right way. They don't, they don't sleep. They are awake to see if something has come. You see the... Do you know what it means? What it takes to handle laptop and you can piece his laptop from beginning to the end? His brain. But that is... The Bible calls that in 1 Timothy 3, it called that earthly wisdom. Sensual. Not the wisdom from above. There is a way poverty will deal with a man. When you say, let us rise up to pray, it's a pray with him. There's a way hunger. That is why not all revelations are correct. Though. There are, there are hunger-induced revelations. There is a level of hunger that will hit you. You will see things. There is a level of hunger that will hit you. You start hearing voices. 
You start hearing voices. I'm telling you, you will sit down like this. Your compound hunger will hit you. You are looking at a chicken passing. You'll be hearing voices. Carry the fowl, catch him. Carry the fowl, catch him. It's not the voice of the Lord. Hunger. And when that hunger hits the man, it begins to. Am I communicating here? He start asking God, "What is this?" I'm praying for you. The anointing of God that you need to handle that area of your life may it come upon you right now. Somebody shout fire, fire, fire. Power is needed to make holiness colorful. Power is needed to make your spiritual transition complete. Power is needed to give value to your work with God. Purity without power is charismatic affliction. Holiness without anointing is a wasted spiritual exercise. Lack of oil can make you miss the rapture. Lack of oil. There is a way a family will be beaten, panabited, harassed, pummeled by the challenges of life. By the battles of life. Mm. Mm. You see, in life, everybody who God has called it must take you through a process. Your ability to be empowered and go through that process is energized by the anointing. Am I talking to somebody here? To even go through a divine process is energized by the anointing. No king in Israel, no priest ever became a priest or a king without the anointing. And you must understand that for you to enjoy the anointing, you must keep growing in it. The anointing is in phases. First Samuel 16, 13, David was anointed to move out of his family. The Bible says he was anointed in the midst of his brethren. First Samuel 16, 13, and the Spirit of God came on him from that day forward. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 4, he was anointed as king over all Judah. And Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 3, he was anointed as king over all Israel. So different levels. No wonder when Saul died, David cried in 2 Samuel 1 21. He said, Saul, you died like a man that was not anointed with oil. Meaning when a man is anointed, he cheats death. Can I repeat that? When a man is anointed, he cheats death. He arouses death. He kills death. There is something that comes on a man that makes death die. Can I repeat that? It did that. So your work with God is complete. I'm not in doubt of it. You are working with God. Very correct. Absolutely true. Truly so. But you lack power. Somebody shall power. Somebody shall power. And because you lack power, it boomerangs and may affect your faith. How many of you have seen people who say, I've been following God. How many of you have had stories like that? I've been following God, following God, but I don't know why my life is still like this. Have you had people say that before? They lack what? What do they lack? Power. 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 Are they going through challenges? Yes. Are they going through troubles? Yes. Are they going through issues? Yes. Barrenness? Yes. Poverty? Yes. Delay marriage? Yes! And all that is happening because of the bankruptcy of what? They went to get oil. Before they came back, he said, no, you can't come in. Because they lacked oil. So we now see why many of us, our work with God, you have so much troubles in your heart. There are people that pay their tithe. They give their offering. They do all of these things. But yet they don't see the kind of returns and results they should see. 
because they lack power. They lack power. They lack power. There are people that wake up with sickness formed in their body. Some of them are sick. They go to the hospital. Doctors say there's nothing wrong. But they know they are not well. Because they lack power. Today, under this open heaven, there's going to be a release of that power. Psalm 92 verse 10. Bring it up. Psalm 92 verse 10. For my hair shall anoint with fresh oil. My horn shall anoint with fresh oil. He said, my head shall I exalt like the head of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Then what will happen? Verse 11. My eyes shall see my desire on my enemies and my ears shall hear. My desire on the wicked that rise up against me. Verse 12. Mm. The righteous. Look at what happens again. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13. Oh, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of our God. Verse 14. This is awesome. They shall bring forth what? Keep that scripture there. They shall bring forth what? Old age. So age is not a limit or a restriction to childbearing. When the anointing comes to childbearing age, you can be 71 and be pregnant. You can be 75 and be pregnant. He said, and they shall be fat and flourishing. So being fat is not a problem. Make sure you flourish. They shall be... <laughs> being fat is not a problem. Make sure you are fat and flourishing. It's when you are fat and broke that we need to pray. He said, they shall be fat and flourishing. So God wants us to be anointed and we shall see our desires we shall hear lord as i'm anointed today as the anointing of god comes upon me my eyes shall see my ears shall hear are you ready for that prayer as the anointing comes upon me my eyes shall see my ears shall hear lift your right hand of fire say my father my father Shout it loud and clear. Father, my father. Let the Lord God hear your voice. My father, my father. Let the angels of God hear your voice. My father, my father. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As I begin to pray. As I begin to pray. I can't hear you. As I begin to pray. As I begin to pray. Let the anointing come upon me. For my eyes to see. And my ears to hear. Open your mouth and turn into prayer. <laughs>
Jesus name. Someone was giving a testimony. We had so many prophetic testimonies in America. But that's what I picked out. A lady said she was diagnosed of cancer, full blown, in America. And they told her to come for whatever chemo. I don't know what it is. I can't I didn't know that part of the story. But this is it. As she had almost given up anything, she was watching wonders with her number. And the Lord described and said, There is somebody watching right now from America. And described her and said, You have cancer. It's gone. She went back to the hospital. The doctor was confused. They couldn't see a trace. What is that? What is that? What is that? Anointing. That thing must have been a contention to our Christian faith. There was a problem. The bridegroom comment at midnight. How many of you know midnight speaks of a time of pain? Psalm chapter 30, verse 5. In his favor is light, for weeping men endure for what? So night, there was midnight. So every pure man, man living in righteousness and purity, must go through a midnight season. And what helps you overcome that midnight season is buoyancy and abundance of oil. Oil. So there is a level of affliction that will hit a man. At that point, what he needs to go through or come out of that is not just purity, it's power. It's that element called the anointing. That manifested reality called the anointing. So I'm going to pray that every battle in my life, every mountain in my life, that is threatening my faith. Power of God, take it out. Every mountain in my life that is threatening my faith. Power of God, take it out. Power of God. Power of God. Power of God. Say, my father, my father. In the name of Jesus, as I pray, every mountain in my life that is in contention with my Christian faith, power of God, take it out, take it out, take it out, take it out, open your mouth and turn it to pray.
upon me bread of heaven breathe upon me spirit of the Lord as I lift my hands in surrender to your name most high I am yielding to your spirit. I am walking in your love. Lord Jesus, I adore. Lord Jesus, I adore. Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, I long to know your glory. I want to offer the sacrifice of praise. Feel this time, oh Lord, with your spirit. Feel me, Lord, feel me. Shalabala. And hallelujah. 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 Touch me, Jesus. Touch me, Jesus. Touch me, Jesus. Touch me, Jesus. Holy Spirit. You are the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Jesus. 
Jesus. The glory of God is already here. The area of your life that needs a visitation where you are having a contention God is going to address it by this anointing as those hands are lifted say this after me Jesus I receive fresh oil on my life Jesus Jesus, I receive fresh oil. I receive fresh oil. 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 Now. 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 Spirit of God, touch. 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 Touch fresh wherever you are there's a release of fresh oil everywhere that battle that mountain is coming to an end touch touch lose that man lose that woman come out I command sickness to leave your body this is healing this is healing Amen. That fibroid, I command it to disappear. Amen. That lump, that growth, that deaf and dumb spirit, paralysis, skin disease, I command it, come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. I command that disease in your body, that tumor, HIV, How? cancer, How? growth, How? Sikonti, right now right now someone has a child that has a mental problem who is the person that just had that somebody has a child who has a brain problem there is a brain problem somebody has a child who has a challenge in the brain I don't know what kind of challenge that is but it's a problem with the brain who is the person who is the person who is the person you have a child who has a challenge with the brain I don't waste my time it's just coming now come woman come 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 woman is this lady come fast thank you you have the picture of the child lift the picture up where are you from from Bode. step back step back we send the healing power of god on that child Amen. is that his picture we command the devil of mind the battle we command shadrach to be healed Amen. Shedrach to be healed. Amen. Huh? What's his name? His name? Shedrach. Huh? Shedrach. We command Holy. him to be healed. We command him to be. There's a woman. I just saw a lady now. I just saw a lady now. Your husband is at the point of death. There's, there's a, a, a sickness on him. No, they, they can't diagnose. They don't know what it's called. They don't know what he's called. It's an attack on your husband. They don't know what he's called. They say they can't trace what the problem is. But he's suffering from that attack now. If you're that person, I want to see you. He's suffering from an attack. They don't know the name of that attack. I want to pray for you right now. Don't waste my time. As I'm hearing it, just come. Don't waste my time. Can you walk faster, madam? I'm seeing somebody, I'm hearing something like Sandra. Your, your pregnancy is overdue. I'm hearing something like Sandra. There's a pregnancy that is overdue. Sandra. Pregnancy overdue. If that is you, come to me. Come to me. I'm about to pray for impartation. Come to me. Pregnancy is overdue. Kobala Masaka Tinabash. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. If you are sick in body, this is your day. <laughs> Jesus is going to heal you. Amen. I didn't just say Sandra. I'm not just talking of Sandra. Pregnant. So don't run out because that's your name. If you are not the one, don't come out. Don't encourage me. 
you are pregnant, your pregnancy 10, your EDD was on the 10th. I see EDD that was on the 10th. So you have passed that EDD. I want to pray for you. Whatever is holding that child, that power will be broken. Amen. Please, if you are Sifau, come here. Sifau. 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 If your name is Sifau. Sifau. If your name is Sifau. If your name is Sifau. You also answer faith. Sifau, you also answer faith. Where is the person? Jehovah the doctor. Hallelujah. Who is the person? Jehovah the doctor. I know. Is your name Sifau? Find out. Sifau. Take up the mic and find Faith. out. Yes, Sifau. Is your name Sifau? Yes, sir. Yours wants a faith? Yes, sir. What about you? Faith, Sifau. Huh? Faith, yes, ma'am. Faith? Yes, ma'am. That's your name? Yes. Are you Sifau? As Mao. As Simao? Yes. No. I want us to pray. Healing power. God is going to heal you. Stand up. Look at me. The enemies want to afflict you with stroke. Open your eye. Open the eye. Don't close it. But God is going to frustrate the counsel of the enemy. Amen. Lift up your hand. Who is Juliet? Who is Juliet? Eh? My mother. Your mother? Yes, sir. Let me pray with you. Who is officiating? My other sister. Eh? My other sister. Thank you. Who is Rashid? My younger brother. Now, I saw a, a vehicle come into your house. Look at me. Why is this now? Look at me. Oh. I saw a vehicle coming. Look at me. I saw a vehicle coming to your house. And the vehicle is coming to your house, into your compound. And I see a corpse, a dead person. The vehicle is carrying a dead person. And the person is wrapped. This is somebody that is supposed to get married. Who did the introduction? In your family, among your... Who did the introduction? My younger sister. Eh? My younger sister. Your younger sister. Marriage introduction. Yes, sir. I see somebody who just did a marriage introduction. The person suddenly... Is there a limit? Yes, sir. Is her name a limit? Yes, sir. I see her suddenly you? collapse. Thank you. And they are bringing a corpse. I'm going to lay my hands on you and I command... As I pray for you, I reach to anyone. Anyone whose family member or you in person has been marked for death, for affliction, attack, is cancelled. Break! It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. I want to pray for your son. The mind be restored. The mind be restored. Amen. There's somebody in a police case. It has to do with a visa agent. Visa agent. There's a police case. A visa agent. It's like somebody who was to do visa for you. Your money and night has led it to something else. Where are you? Come here. I'm not walking to the crowd. I just want to round up so we can go in this fire. So if you are the person, come here. Somebody was supposed to help you procure a visa and 
the money just went like that but now there's a case there's a, a, a serious case come forward let me pray for you 2022 doors will open Amen. where's the person where's the person Komenisa Bradash where is the person? I'm going to count to three. If you're not here, I'll just move on. Somebody took money from you. They will help you get a visa. And now, there's a police issue. The visa is not coming. What are you? One. Two. Hallelujah. God said, pray for gift. Who is gift? The Lord said, pray for gift. Okolo. Thank you, Lord. Akaya, kaya. Wait. There's someone, your elder sister is abroad. But right now, both of you are not on talking terms because there's a problem between the both of you. But she lives abroad. There's a problem. There's a quarrel. Big issue between the two of you. I don't know what led to it, but there's a problem between the two of you. I want you to come here. Let me pray for you. I didn't say your elder brother, your elder sister. It's you? Come here, come here. Hallelujah. 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 I see a man. I'm seeing a man, not a woman, a man that is bleeding. Man, you are bleeding. You are bleeding, bleed, bleed. You are a man. You are bleeding heavily. Passing out blood. You are a man. The Holy Spirit wants to correct your body. Please come to me. The Holy Spirit wants to correct your body. You are a man and you are just passing out blood. Blood. God wants to heal you. Come, come forward. All the way can you ruari ne beno? You see, you can do. Aka kaya, aka Giovanni Mima. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody has a problem in the house where the person is staying. You have a little challenge. And you brought your landlord's picture to church. Now, this person has become like a strong man. <laughs> That's why, that's why I laughed when I heard it. <laughs> this person has become like a strong man in your life. And this... <laughs> Can you come? He has threatened you. You have his picture. He has threatened you. He has harassed you. You've been praying about the threat. Praying about the threat. About all that he has said. And you are here. Please come forward. Let me pray with you. Come forward. Your landlord. The picture is with you. Come, 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 come fast. Come. Let's cancel that statement. Let's reverse that threat. Where's your husband? Lift your hands. I'm waiting for you. Don't go out. Come here. There's going to be peace in your home. Did you, did you hear what I said? Do I say I love you? Do I say peace in your home? Amen. Do I say I'm great? I'm waiting for that person. That's not the person. He doesn't have a picture with him. 
I'm waiting for you. Do I say I love you? Heal the husband. Do I say? Are you bleeding? How long have you been bleeding? How long? Father will command the bleeding to cease. Be made whole. Be peace. Peace. Seven family members, two are dead. Seven family members, two are dead. And one of them has a problem in her marriage. Seven, two are dead. One has a problem among the five left. One critical problem in her marriage. Can I pray for you? One has a critical problem in her marriage. And God wants to bring peace to that marriage. Now, everybody lift up your hand. If you are that person, come. Don't waste my time. Come to me. Everybody lift up your hands. Ola. If your name is Ola, please come. Ola. 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 As these hands are lifted, come to me. Ola, come. As these hands are lifted, I ask for fresh oil. Amen. Are you Allah? Come, just stand there. Wait for me. Stand there. Wait for me. I release fresh oil. Amen. Your financial life is empowered. Amen. Your financial life is empowered. Amen. Who has a child in Cyprus? Who has a child in Cyprus? A child in Cyprus. You have a child in Cyprus. On this road, who has a child in Cyprus? You, please come, sir. Hallelujah. The child is there now. There's a problem concerning that child. There's a major problem. Okay. The Lord, I, I, I will see you, sir. I'm hearing talk to him in private. I'll see you. I'll see you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray, but there is a young girl. The Lord just told me that a serpent appears to you and discusses with you. When the snake appears, it will talk to you. You hear the voice. Of the snake. It will appear and it will disappear. The Lord said, I need to pray for you because this must not follow you to next year. There's a serpent that is threatening your life. It appears. The serpent will appear. You see the serpent. You are a lady. Can I pray for that person wherever you are? Can I pray for you? Can I pray for the girl? Come this way. Holy. Come this way. Lift your hand and say fresh oil. Fresh oil. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree fresh oil upon your life. Amen. In your walk with God. Amen. My God, what is this? I just saw somebody who's addicted to drinking foil. You drink foil. You don't know what happens. It just comes sometimes. You put it in your mouth. Come here. Foil. Fiel. Whatever it's called. Fuel, fiel. Where are you? You drink fuel or fiel, whatever you call it. Can you come? Let me. Pray. It's addiction. Is it you? Don't move about anyhow, so I don't point you. You addict. You, you see yourself. It's so bad that sometimes you. Well, what I'm hearing is that sometimes you can even suck it in a hose. I just had that. Please come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. God is showing me that your whole system, intestines to kidney to liver, that they are corrupted. I want to pray for you. They are corrupted. The system. 
is corrupted. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I'm sure everybody way to the back can hear me clearly. So nobody can hear what I said. Fiel. F U E L. Fuel. Fiel. Petrol. Is she the one? Madam, wait first. Wait, wait, wait. We are specific. Let's handle the one we are doing now. Where are you? You are in this meeting. You are in this service. You are in this service. It's not possible that you are not here. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. You are here. You are addicted to drinking fear. You even suck it at times. You just see hose. You, you check if there is for you start sucking the hose. You are in this service. It's not possible. You are not here. Blessings. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? What is it? Your system. The reason I'm calling you out is because your system is corrupted. That's the word the Lord is using. That your whole system is corrupted. Kidneys to intestines is, is corrupted. Let's pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Whether, the, whether you're male or you're female. You said a snake appears to you. How often do you see it? Yes, I've been seeing it for over two years now. Over two years. Lift up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare deliverance. I declare freedom. Let every contact be severed. The yoke be broken. The yoke be broken. The yoke be broken. The yoke be broken. Let I be totally pick her up. Let I be totally free. Let Jesus set her free. Amen. Break. Amen. Jesus name. Where is the person I spoke about? You drink fuel. Listen, your system is corrupted. Your body, your intestines, everything is bad. Kidneys. Oh. 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 It's a woman. It's a, it's a woman. It's a lady. It's female. Step out. For death could not hold him captive. Uh -huh. Even in the grave, uh -huh. you are saying something. Where is the person? My soul will magnify the Lord. Be free. My spirit praises His name. Jesus. For that could not hold him captive. Even in the grave. What is the matter? What's the matter there? Osha, what's the matter with her? Come, come. I will ask of the Lord. Sit down here. Who is the person drinking fuel? That's what I want to see. Oh, Lord. 
It's a lady. Both of you are dressed alike. Are you together? Are you husband and wife? Come, two of you. Father, we want to honor you. Want to honor you. Want to honor you. Kila kata la takata. I hear the Lord say to tell you. It, it will not be 31st of December yet. Until all your entitlement you've lost from January is given to you. Amen. Amen. This year will not end without a release of abundant blessings. Amen. That this week, the God of heaven will attend to your needs. Amen. The God of heaven will attend to your needs. Amen. The God of heaven will surprise you. Amen. Especially this week. It shall be your week of surprises. Amen. You are not saying, you are not saying that amen loud. Amen. Pleasant, pleasant surprise. Amen. Beautiful surprises. Amen. The God of heaven will show you mercy. Amen. Will give you favor. Amen. Will release grace upon you. Amen. You will do well. Amen. You will do well. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to this. This is strange. Listen to this. Amen. Excuse me. Excuse me. The Lord just said that I should tell you, listen, not you now, not for yourself. Any member of your family that's given you concern, pray about them now. That's what God just told me. Any member of your family that's given you concern, pray about that person now. Pray about those people now because God wants to answer those prayers. Right now, pray, pray. Any member of your family that's giving you concern, pray. Pray. Brother, sister, mother, father, children, pray. And tell the Lord. Sikapamanikota. In Jesus' name. Numbers 14 28. As surely as I live, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do. I'm praying for you. I receive that family member you have mentioned to the Lord. Oh. I decree answers to that prayer. Amen. <laughs> Whatever you've asked God for them, they receive it right now. Amen. And we are praying. We cancel accidents. Amen. Anyone marked for death, that mark by the blood of Jesus is erased. Amen. Look to this. I see a, a national disaster. Listen to this. The national disaster I see is a this is a major a clash of trailers. This is heavy duty accident. A clash of trailers that little vehicles became victims of. But these are trailers. These are trailers. Collide. And these are vehicles, vehicles as it were victims and I'm seeing blood everywhere by the power of the Holy Spirit listen to this when a prophecy is given a word is given there will be a sign so that you know that oh this is what was spoken about but every one of you here you are exempted from it Amen. 
anyone that's connected to you is exempted from it amen whatever the enemy has programmed to take the lives and blood of people today that blood sucking devil will frustrate you amen in the name of jesus amen. it is well with you amen. if you want to make peace with god and you want me to pray for you you see apostle i want to make peace with god i want to walk with god i want to follow jesus for the rest of my life i want you to pray for me if you are saying that to yourself i'd like you to raise your right hand you want to make peace with god and you want me to pray for you can you come forward and meet me here raise your right hand and come forward i want to pray for you i want to pray for you come 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 you want to make peace with god come 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 Are they coming? Clap your hands as they come. Suprida shati da siga tidiasa. I will like it unto you. Great desire. A great physician. You are a healer. Your love is amazing. Your past so refreshing. Our ears attentive. We will hack in unto you. Most of you in front of me, can you lift your hands? Say, Jesus, I come to you today. Just as I am. Have mercy on me write my name in the book of life forgive me my sins i believe in my heart i confess with my mouth that jesus is my lord and my savior from today i will follow you no turning back i receive grace to stand firm jesus name i pray for you that you will not fail this day the grace for the race jesus mighty name fill all the forms that you have look at me in two minutes they want to do something just go this way this way this way the anointing of god is already upon you the power of god is on you just go this way clap for them as they move let's be upstanding as we as we close the fountain of life is flowing everywhere. Whosoever drink shall never ever test again. The fountain of life is flowing everywhere. Whosoever drink shall never ever test again. We are going to continue with that song. Our life in the spirit continues. How many of you have been partaking in the life in the spirit prayers? It's not complete if you are not in church. Come and pray. Six and three. If you can't make six, you should make three. You must at least make one of them. If you make both, better for you. Amen. So weekly service for now is suspended so that we can have time to do that. Amen. As you wait on the Lord, there are going to be many distractions. Ignore them. What did I say? Some of you, you might be your own distraction. People look at you, ah, you are losing weight, oh, that's it, the devil, that's the devil, that's the devil, that's the devil. Are you following me? Ah, you are losing weight, on the spot, turn to the person, get thee behind me, Satan. Hello, just focus on, we'll be in prayers. Then, on Wednesday, we're going to be here for our carol service. Amen. What time is it? Three? Oh, sorry, Thursday. Sorry, sorry, Thursday. Amen. So we're going to be here on Thursday for that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. So we all are going to come and celebrate our Master. A lot of people don't believe in Christmas. 
Some say Jesus was not born December 25th. Please tell them to tell you when he was born. They say he was not born 25th. They should tell us when he was born. If they don't know the date, they should keep quiet. Amen. We are just honoring Jesus. And it's a season to share love. Praise the Lord. Mama's Crusades counselors should wait after the close of service. At the first protocol stand. Where's that? Is it here? Okay. All of service. Supernatural night. How many of you know it is very prophetic and timely that the last day of the year is a fire night, is a crossover? Everyone be upstanding. When I say stand, I mean stand. 29th and 30th is Operation Jabez. I'm going to be praying. Get an offering in your hand and lift above your head. Lift your offerings above your head. Your offering is blessed. In Jesus' name. If you came with a prophetic seed or maybe a vow, you want to fulfill that, come and cast it on the altar right now. If you came late, you've not dropped your tithe, come and do that on the right hand side. All partners, cast your seed in that bowl there. Every other one, your seed faith is accepted. Only partners are to cast their seed here. Only partners. Every other person, do yours on the altar. The rest of you that you came with your seed faith, it is blessed. In Jesus' name. Come on, choir. The fountain of life is flowing everywhere. Whosoever drink shall never ever trust again. The fountain of life everybody. is flowing everywhere. Whosoever drink shall never ever trust again. The fountain of life is flowing everywhere. Whosoever drink oh, shall never ever trust again. The fountain of life is flowing everywhere. Whosoever drink.
I decree that you are blessed your oil will never run dry <clears throat> this week for you shall be pleasant surprise it shall be good news all through in Jesus mighty name amen as usual don't forget we have our Christmas service here I hope you know that 10 in the morning we have our Christmas service. That day, don't fast. That day. But I told you before. Why are you shouting? But I already told you before. That day, don't fast. Only that day. Then, New Year day, don't fast. So those two days... 25th, don't fast. Only 25th. Don't 26th fast. Okay, only 25th. It's only that day. Then January 1st, the same thing. Amen. I said amen. amen. So that when churches are doing their fasting, we are through. We are done. We'll just go on with our Praise the Lord. It's a good week for you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. My head is a good head. My life is a good one. Angels shall fight for me. Greatness is on my side. Goodness shall follow me. No matter what the matter is. Preservation. Somebody shout, my time has come.